title, and Jesus said. How simple is that? And there is a story of a rich old man. He had riches beyond control. But he was on a quest. He had three sons. And he wanted to know which one of the three was the most loving towards an enemy. So one day he called them and he took all his wealth, all his gold, his mansions, his lovely cars, and he distributed those among the three equally. But he kept one thing for himself. And he said, this will be the reward for the one of the three who is the most lovable towards an enemy. It was a huge diamond ring. So he sent them away for a few days to travel the world and then they would come back and tell the story of what they had done and then he would be the judge as to who among the three was loving enough to get that diamond ring. So after a while, when the three had traveled, they came back, and the father said to the eldest, what have you done? He said, Father, I met a woman. She gave me all the wealth to add to mine, but I could not receive it. I gave it all back. The father said, but you did what all or anybody would do. The second son said, I went down by the seaside and there was a riptide. Then I saw a child fell overboard, so I plunged beneath the wave, the waves, in an attempt to save her life. The father said, This was a wonderful thing, and yes, that was pleasant. But far higher worth should claim that ring. Then it was the turn of the youngest son. He said, my father, I was off on this huge hill overlooking the ocean, and down in the valley, there I was, tending to my sheep. Yes, he was a sheep herder. And I am very familiar with the hill because I know there's a precipice below there. But when I looked further, I noticed my enemy fast asleep on the edge of the precipice. Father, I wondered, should I just kick him overboard? But no, I walked over to him. I woke him up although he was my bitter enemy, and I saved him from the impending wars. The father was very happy. He cried with pride and joy. He said, my boy, the ring is yours, because you have banished all forms of revenge from your heart, and you have allowed your love to come through. You have truly acted the Christian part. You have won the, wick, the ring, I promised, for the noblest did. The father said, take it and keep it. This ring belongs to you. And Christian friends this morning, as we listen to the story, we must be aware that Jesus admonished all of us to always act and behave like Christians. To act and behave and be the Christian part that you were born to be. And speaking through the mouth of the Apostle Paul, that is no, when Paul was speaking, it was Jesus really speaking through Paul and all the prophets. Jesus said, let your love be true. Let not your love be hypocritical. Jesus said, do not be crooked in business. Be fair with other people's money. And Jesus said, 
When you see others suffering and going through a difficult time, we do not laugh and give the thumbs up. To think that we have overcome the enemy, we pray for them. Even if you are going through a tribulation, you have to live your life diligently with prayer. Jesus said, be hospitable to one another. Bless them who persecute you. I know this is not always easy to do. But Jesus said, bless those who curse you. Be happy for those who are happy. And when they are crying and going through a sorrowful time, you should also sorrow with them. Jesus said, do not exalt yourself among others. Be of the same mind towards one another. Jesus said, put your egos aside. Be not wise in your own conscience. Do not render evil for evil and try to be as honest as you can in the eyes of all people. Jesus said, you should also try to live in peace with everyone. And that's not very easy to do, to live in peace, we know that. Some of us have good neighbors, some of us have, have bad neighbors. And I remember when I lived in Bridgewater, I lived in a duplex house. I had a neighbor on one side, and she had a dog. And every time to walk the dog, it would be on my side of the grass. And one day I came from church, I was wearing my brand new Payless shoes, you remember Payless? <laughs> and as I took one step, there I went in the doo-doo. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? I went and knocked on the door, and I said, my shoes, <laughs> can you see my shoes? And thinking she would be nice, she said, well, you have to clean it up yourself. And the story goes, yes, I was mad. I did not speak to her for a while. And instead of going through my front door, I would back up my car to the back. And the back door became my entrance to the house. I refused to even look at her. But in the end, I knew I had to let it go because she is my neighbor. And it may not be easy for you and I or anybody here this morning, it is not always easy to forgive a neighbor. When you lay at night, they would have the parties next door. I would be up like three in the morning and the music is going on and on. What am I supposed to do? I have a music set too that's very loud. Do I turn it on in revenge? Or should I wait when morning comes, because by that time they will be asleep and turn mine up. I know neighbors who do that. And I was not even yet in seminary. I am not better than anybody else. We are all humans, right? And we get angry. And in my mind I kept thinking, well, I should turn the music on at 5 o'clock in the morning and blast it up. Anybody ever been there before? Am I the only one? But I didn't do that still. And I just prayed that it would get better. In the end, it did get better because she realized that I was not going down the same road with her. Jesus said, if your enemy is hungry, feed him or her. If they are thirsty, you have to give them some water. You have to do all the kind deeds and when you do, you will repose a fire on their heads. <laughs> what does Jesus mean by ripping holes of fire? To rip holes of fire, it means you will become wealthy. <laughs> and I'm not sure if you, the congregation, knows that in the eyes of God, the best dream that anyone can dream when they go to bed at night is the dream of burning holes. C-O-A-L-S. Did you know that? In the Bible, burning coals symbolize transformation, strength, and overcoming obstacles. 
And Jesus used the dream of burning coals that we can go to bed and dream that, and then we know we are overcome. Have anyone ever dreamed about burning coals in their lifetime? You go to bed, and then you see a pit, P-I-T, of burning coals. That's a spiritual dream. See how much we are learning this morning? <laughs> Jesus concluded his teaching by saying, Be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In other words, we cannot leave our lives an eye for an eye. Earlier in the message of the wealthy dad, who gave away all his wealth to his three sons, and although all their deeds were good, in the end, the one who, or the one who won the heart of the father was the son with the forgiving heart towards his enemy. And I know some of us may have enemies this morning, whether we want to admit that or not. I hope there are no enemies in church here this morning. <laughs> they may be at home, they may be at work or in the office, on the street, in the grocery store. While we know it is not always easy to forgive, and many of us would rather let the words go into our heads and go out with no effect, Always remember that Jesus judges us from the heart. Spiritual blindness came to Israel because they crucified the Savior. But instead of being angry at Israel, in Romans 11, 26, Jesus said, All of Israel will be saved. All of Israel will be saved even if they crucified me. And this is my covenant and I will take away their sins. All of Israel, I don't think they know that. And it's in your Bible in Romans 11, 26. They may have been an enemy to me, but I will save them. They may have been ignorant to the gospel, but in my eyes, they are the law. And Jesus is saying to us this morning, we can do likewise. We can be kind to those who are not kind to us, because in my eyes, everyone, you could be my beloved. And in closing, let us all remember that there are many things that Jesus said. He said we were all born pagans of God. We were all, we were all born in unbelief, and we were born that way, so that he could have mercy on all of us. Hating someone does not mean that Jesus is not going to welcome you. Hating someone means that Jesus is giving you the chance to come to terms with your hatred and he's waiting for a chance to give you or to offer you eternal life by admitting your, your faults and coming for forgiveness. By making your heart right, he is pleading with all of us this morning to look into our own hearts and be lovers, not haters, and to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And when we do that, you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect. This is or will be 